everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we are back with the HP Stream Mini right over here. It's hiding underneath my monitor uh, because we are going to try out a few games on here beyond what we tested in the first video, which was just Minecraft. We're going to look at a few others. So right now I am running uh, League of Legends, which I hear is rather popular with the kids these days. So here we are uh, running it here. You can see up in the right-hand corner, we've got the uh, frames per second that we're currently running at, so you can get an idea as to how... Uh, it's capable of doing this. What I found with most of these modern games is that uh, it will start to slow down the more that be, you know more that happens on the screen. However, we're at its like default settings here uh, at 1920 by 1080, and it's certainly uh, playable at this point. It's holding steady around 30 frames per second or so. So you're not going to get what you would see out of uh, something much more powerful, but uh, you are able to play the game and probably play it at a uh, decent frame rate. Uh, if you're looking to do that sort of thing. So we'll let some, some of these guys get on the screen here and you can see um, I got killed rather quickly here, but uh, there's a lot going on right here and we still have a good amount of, uh, of uh, frame rate here to play with. So not bad. In fact, I think uh, if you're looking to play this game, um, this will probably uh, function pretty well on the stream mini. So uh, League of Legends, I would say definitely give it a shot. And we can always turn settings down too if we needed to get better performance out of it. But let's see uh, how it performs with uh, something else like Counter-Strike Go. All right, here we are running Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and I wanted to see what the best possible resolution I could get at the highest setting. So this is it here running at 720p. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner, uh, you can see the frame rate. Unfortunately, the way my video system works here, I can't really see uh, the uh, frame rate while I'm recording here because it's kind of cut off by my monitor. But you can get a sense as to, you know, if you really want to crank the settings up, 720p is about where you're going to be. Not the most consistent frame rate. You can adjust, of course, the resolution and uh, the individual settings to get better performance out of it. But this, I think, really gives you an idea of what the system's capabilities are as far as uh, its overall frame rate is concerned. So uh, you can get a feel for what its capabilities are. It's a pretty decent little computer. It's, you know, again, it's mostly all contained on the processor. So this is using the internal uh, Intel graphics that uh, come on board the, uh, the Haswell chipset. So this is pretty much what you'll, uh, probably the best you'll see as far as high settings and frame rates concerned uh, with uh, the uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive here. So that is how that works. And now we're gonna move on uh, to a little bit of emulation with a GameCube emulator. Okay, so here we are running the uh, Dolphin emulator along with Wave Race. Now I'm running this at 1024 by 768, so kind of close to uh, what you would have on a normal television running with a normal GameCube. Uh, the frame rate isn't bad. It looks better on screen than it might actually be in reality. So you typically, on the high side, get about uh, 20 to 25 frames per second, but then when things really start to uh, tax the system a little bit, it goes down from there. So sometimes you get um, you know, a little bit jaggedy as you're playing. So it's not perfect for uh, that kind of emulation, but it's certainly playable. And I think some games that might have less graphic intensity, uh, Wave Race does have a lot of, you know, with the water effects and everything, does tend to kind of bog down uh, slower computers. But it's definitely playable, certainly a lot more useful than it might be on one of the Atom processors. So you could definitely get away with that. I think as you work your way down in emulation, you know, if you go down to like Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and then all the way back through, uh, through the 90s, 80s, and 70s, all of those systems, uh, including a lot of uh, the stuff you would run on MAME, uh, should work fine. So this is probably a really good choice for a retro emulator. I would probably say the cutoff point uh, would be at the end of the 32-bit uh, the era. You know, you probably won't see as uh, good a performance out of PlayStation 2 emulators and uh, the Dolphin emulator, as you saw here. One last thing to try, and that is Steam in home streaming. So here we are playing the next car game and streaming it from my gaming PC upstairs to the HP Stream Mini. Now I have this going via Ethernet, so the frame rate is really decent. Um, we've got a pretty powerful gaming machine upstairs that is driving all of this as well. Uh, it does have Wi-Fi on board, but uh, the, uh, the Wi-Fi is not AC, so you may or may not have a good wi wireless experience with this. So I always recommend, especially for this kind of activity, using Ethernet, and that would be uh, what Valve, the makers of Steam, would recommend also. But as you can see, things are running great, and I think you can get an idea now uh, when you look at kind of the, the big picture on this device, uh, what you can do with it. So I think it certainly can do, uh, you know, League of Legends and Minecraft as we've seen. Uh, I can certainly play, you know, games that might tax the hardware a little bit more if you turn down a lot of the settings and kind of tweak everything. Uh, and it's also great for retro emulation. I would say, you know, you can certainly get the GameCube and the PS2 kind of stuff to run on it, but I think it's probably uh, the sweet spot is going to be from like the PlayStation 1, so the mid-90s, uh, back through the uh, 80s and 70s for arcade and console games. And you can kind of get a feel for uh, what you can 
do with this. I mean, this is really like the ultimate little home theater PC, $179, full version of Windows installed. Uh, you can get your emulators on there. You can play your Blu-ray movies. You can use it as you know, a complete entertainment center and stream uh, stuff from your PC to your television in your living room uh, with the operating system of your choice. So you could use Windows as we're doing here, or you could install Linux. You can do whatever you want with it pretty much. It is a uh, pretty much an open-ended uh, $179 PC. So I am really uh, loving this device. I have to send it back to HP, unfortunately, but I think I'm going to buy one anyhow just to uh, use as my little uh, entertainment center here around the house because I do have that uh, gaming PC upstairs, and sometimes I don't want to sit upstairs. I want to sit downstairs on my big screen, and I think uh, this will be a great way to get those games uh, delivered uh, to the screen of my choice. So that will conclude our series on the HP Stream Mini PC, and I do appreciate everyone's suggestions over the last week or two about what we should test on it, and I hope uh, this answers all of your questions. I had a lot of fun playing with it, but it's unfortunately got to go back in the box, uh, back to its home. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching.